Eric Ebron, when we took him, I, bla oh. I blacked out afterwards. I grabbed the first bottle I saw, chugged it. I went outside, and I punched somebody's car. I was that bad. <laughs> and I still live in that neighborhood. So guess who's blocking it? Yeah. It's mine. <laughs> What up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Wilbur Head Witch Podcast. I'm your boy, Easy, joined by my man, Kung Fu Spinny. What up, Spin what, up, what, up, what up, what up, what up, what up, what up, what up, We're joined by a special guest today, my man, Russell. In the wow. building. Ooh, 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 ooh. Real quick, Russell, I know I moved your mic, but like these things. Dude, I, I'm aware. I know. Yeah, okay, yeah, cool. He cool. fucking he podcasts in here. Dude, I That's work true. here. Yeah. Dude. Sorry, dude. <laughs> Fuck, man. Sorry, dude. I'm going to this guy. Like, he's some kind of casual. Yeah, dude. I want people to know that you work here, dude. This is Ross, dude. He runs the pot, the draft podcast. Is that the name of it? The draft, the draft show. show. The draft show. How original. Real I fucking know. creative you got there. Yeah. <laughs> I had a couple different options, and then I was like, dude, let's just keep it simple. Yeah. I don't yeah. need to. What were like, the other options, actually? Uh, actually, Brown and Bischoff, but that's too common because people don't know it's draft. I know. And uh, let me see. Let me see. You, I mean... Let me see. Let me see. What else did I have? Picks. Big picks. Oh, I got uh, Inside the War Room. The pick is in. Ooh. Inside the War Room's cool. Yeah. I yeah. like the pick is but in. There was a lot going on because I wanted it to have Bischoff and Brown on there because I wanted some name brand yeah. type shit. Everything. I don't know if you heard Drew. Drew Lane was just here. By the way, you know who Drew Lane is, right? Yeah. Like I, legend, I'm, right? I met him when you guys were talking. Did you know him before then, though? Like the name and shit? Yeah, I know. Yeah. Spence didn't know who he was, and I was like, how do you not know Drew Lane? But Never avoid of him. Young Never avoid of him. Never avoid of him. <laughs> Never avoid him. By the way, I got to say this real quick. We're brought to you by the Better Rate Mortgage Studio. Shout out Better Rate, baby. Right, so I was a mortgage rate. banker once. There you go. Me too. Well, Easy. I was an accountant, Zach. He said, I have 100 jobs. You had 100 jobs. No, dude, I had like four jobs, for real. Yeah, this is my first three. Yeah, yeah. I, I had quite a few. Yeah, I know. You always surprise so me. You're like, yeah, no, back no. when I was picking up garbage. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, had a, uh, I was a dishwasher at the Carlos, Chicken Shack, Andiamo, Grand Traverse Yeah, but were Pie. these like when you were like 16? Yeah, I started when I was 13. that shit don't count, man. Started when I was 13. So when you were like 18. But I worked, I worked at Chicken Shack for like eight years. Dude, we'll like a chicken, a chicken shack with a, a Little Caesars in it? No, just... God, just... that is the best Little Caesars ever. Is that a thing? It's a combo? It's a, it's a thing. And it's wow. a... Where are you from? I live in Livonia. Oh, can you get, can you get chicken pizza? That's some rich pizza. I don't shit. know, but like there's a chicken, like over by the Westland Mall, dude, there's a chicken shack and a Little Caesars. Uh -huh. And it is, damn. That Little Caesars is Illich and the Sobex. It's the bomb. Combining combining forces. Yeah, it's fucking good. He's trying to recruit more uh, urban kids. You know, yeah. Little Caesars. <laughs> <laughs> right. LCA, baby. Yeah, hell yeah. All right, Russ is the NFL. How, actually, because you are an NFL draft scout, how does one become that? What, yeah, what, you played football. What, yeah, did you play football? You did, be, uh, yeah. Be the water. yeah, I did play high school football. Um, I played at Salem High School. We sucked, um, yeah. but shout out rocks. Um, but no, we weren't great or anything like that. I just, I, I was like your standard kid that was like, if you need a guy to run through a wall, that was me. That okay. was, and so, in or? Uh, so I started as a receiver and a corner. Um, I started both ways as a freshman. Then as my sophomore year, I did the same thing, and then our. Defensive end got hurt. I tried backup quarterback, and my, my head coach was like, no, fuck you. <laughs> you're left-handed. You're weird. Get out of here. I'm not changing this offense for you. So I was like, okay, cool, whatever. I, play, <laughs> I, I loved playing defense. I love hitting people. It's just what I love to do. That's why whenever I played hockey, I was never very productive because I just messed pe I didn't mess people up, but I just was running into people all the time. Yeah. Like, yeah. And, uh, yeah, so – I moved to defensive end because our tight end and defensive end tore his ACL, and I was speed off the edge. But I was a little guy. I was like 130 pounds, but it didn't matter. I, I played Class A football as a 150-pound defensive end, played against Eric Fisher, got my ass kicked, played Ooh, played damn. against Canton High School, got my ass kicked. But I didn't care. I was more of like uh, that senior year, like an outside linebacker type guy. But I got away from football for like a year or two, had a kid, and I uh, was like, man – I need football in my life. I was working a night shift job. I look, I looked sick. Like I would, yeah. like I, I was, I was probably about 145 pounds. I looked sick and I was like, I was depressed and I was like, I need football. So I started just doing football and coaching at, at the high school level over at garden city high school. And I ended up over at Plymouth and then I started coaching my kid and stuff. Uh, but doing the draft, it's just something I've always liked. When I was a little kid, my parents had a boat on Lake Erie and I would sneak down in the cabin when they would go down on a walk or something. And I would write down all the picks, 
all the teams, all the players, and I was nerd alert. <laughs> yeah, I, dude, I was a legit nerd, and I was trying to be like the next Mel Kiper. Oh yeah, and, that's dope. You gotta uh, get your hair plugs. Yeah, and and, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, I got your widow's peak. I, I gotta start talking about Ty. You talk about a guy, you know. <laughs> you gotta start, I gotta start talking like that. But uh, that was pretty good. <laughs> yeah, but um, <laughs> but no, I started doing that in 2010, and I was on a on a podcast for my buddy's blog that did like Detroit sports. It was called TheMajors.net, and I don't think it's around anymore, but. They just did like a little thing in like the garage and I did a show and they were like, that was really good. Like you should be our draft guy. So I started doing a podcast and I did that for four or five years on and off. And then finally I was like, dude, I'm, I'm, I'm doing all this all the time. I love it. Let me go yeah. see what's out there for myself. So I applied at fan sighted. I got in, I did that for okay. a year and then cover one reached out and like, they were exactly what I was looking for deep down the rabbit hole of players and breaking down film. And it got me connected. It got me to here and. The rest is history. Oh, yeah, I mean, man. and then I uh, and then I got into radio. I, I wanted to do sports broadcast. But I got into drugs. Yeah. <laughs> started doing cocaine at eighteen. <laughs> uh, no, and then <laughs> that's when I started heroin. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> We're talking present day, right? <laughs> yeah. Let me let me tell you about this program I'm in. <laughs> uh, SMA. We have podcast. <laughs> right. um, but yeah, so I I uh, I've always wanted to do radio, and I. Couldn't do it because, like I said, I was working night shift job. I just, I didn't have the time and I didn't have the energy for it. So I finally, when I got to cover one, there was like a, a radio thing and the, the Eric Turner, the guy that runs it, it was like, hey, you should do this draft show podcast or uh, contest that they have down at Midday 180 in Nashville, Tennessee. So they took a bunch of like Twitter people and put them in a contest. And I was like the last one to go. And I listened to all my. How many followers did you have at that point? Well, my, when I start, like when I started taking Twitter seriously in like 2016, 2017, I had a hundred followers. And then by the 2017 draft, I had maybe 500 or something like that. Okay. And then now I'm up to, I don't know, seven, 7,500. No, I'm saying we're we'll going to the contest though. How many yeah, no, going into the contest. I mean, I'm, maybe I had a thousand. I don't, okay. I don't even really remember, but I did the show and I, I like, I listened to all my colleagues and all my friends that were doing it. And I'm like, okay, not bad, not bad. And I remember I was at my, I'm at my day job. I go home for lunch cause I lived close enough. I walk into my office, I hop on and I got an A plus and I was like, I've, I just fucking made it. Yeah. Hell yeah. I, yeah. This is it. And I felt so good. And I did another one, the next round, another A plus got to the finals. I didn't win, but I did end up getting another A and they gave it to another guy who I greatly respect. But since then, I've done, I mean, I've had, I've, I've probably done well over 500 radio hits since then. And that's been, that's been within probably a two year, three year time frame. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, man. So yeah. And now I'm here. It's fucking dope. And yeah. And now you're, now you're part of the Woodward sports family. Yeah. And honestly, like any, anybody that's out there that's like doing like radio or something like, yeah, it, it's time consuming to do a 20 minute spot. But it's practice. Yeah. It allows yeah. me to practice my cadence and how I want to sound. Because you know me when I'm talking to you normally, I don't yeah. sound like the way I sound. I change my voice a little I'll bit. I'll say your voice is like fucking like you sound like. I, I, yeah. I, I change it, but I figured out the cadence and I figured out what I sound good at sounding like. Yes. And I roll with that. Like, you know, you could probably do like that deep voice, like Barry White, like late yes. night fever. Like, hello, yeah. baby. Like, but I, I can't yeah, do that. Sure. But, but I can't talk like my normal self. Like when the mic's on. It flips. I don't know. Yeah. Like a black guy on the news. Like, <laughs> against, against the white person voice. Outside of this country ass shit. <laughs> like, and here we are at like, four o'clock <laughs> Hey, what's that video? Hi, welcome back. What's dude. that video of the dude down in like Arkansas? That's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> country ass shit. Country ass fucking yeah. town. Yeah. Yeah. Fly hits him in the mouth yeah. or whatever. He's like, yeah. mother fucking yeah. die. Yeah. We're yeah. down here. I'm sick of this country ass yeah. shit. Oh, yeah. man. That shit is fun. so good. how did that even leak out? Was like, uh, yeah, it's I don't know. but It's like the Winnebago man, right? Like We got flies everywhere. Yeah. There's, there's no words on it. Yeah. Fucking flies. <laughs> <laughs> no, dude, you fucking. All right, so let me, can I ask you? Or you guys questions, Vince? I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Ask me whatever so, you want. I learned some shit like from you today. I never knew the 2050 was a thing. And obviously, it makes sense. Like I've always learned that your gaps, mm -hmm. and then like obviously the offensive side of it as well. But like, how did you teach yourself the game of football to where you could like study film and study tape? Because not like, well, I guess coaching. Like well, coaching, I did part. a lot of coaching clinics when I was coaching at the high school level. Um, I went out to like Glacier clinics out in Grand Rapids and stuff. So I met uh, like Ron Burton, 
a defensive line coach at Michigan State, no longer there. Um, but he he was somebody that I spoke to a lot and just kind of learned a lot about football. But my love for football starts back, honestly, like I'm not, I'm not even bullshitting you, back when I was two, three years old. I would, my dad would put me in front of the TV, right? And I'd, Tackle me. <laughs> yeah, and I was just ready and I just uh, started hitting everybody. You just throw me against the wall. Yeah. <laughs> But no, I and I would, uh, <laughs> dude. You didn't tell me. Spike. You didn't tell me you're fucking hot in here. <laughs> no, um, but no. So I, I would watch John Madden and like Pat Summerall, and I'd watch Fox all the time, and I was like just so in tune to football, and I would write down plays and try to copy what John Madden was doing. Yeah. And now obviously, like what I was doing was nowhere close to what was realistic. Yeah. yeah. But when I went to preschool, my dumbass. They're like, okay, write your name on the bottom of your hand painting. I didn't write Russ. I did X and a zero and a line, and it's still on my parents' garage today. Yeah. Like, not That's dope. like the door to the garage. It's yeah. still on there, and um, Hell yeah. it just it stems to that. So when I was in high school, I cre- wild, I actually. created my own offense. I gave it to my offensive coordinators and stuff like that. And I was like, yo, we should run this. And they were like, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> they were like, go out and be a kid or something. And I was like, no, no. like I love this shit. And I was just like, Did all use it. Fuck no. no. <laughs> That's why we lost all the time. Yeah. Hell yeah. And, uh, should have been running spider three wide banana. Yeah. And it, <laughs> it's the, the ultimate play right in the Turkey hole. Yeah. And, uh, it was just one of those things, man. <laughs> <laughs> We're recording a podcast. Damn it. <laughs> but it was just one of those things, man. Like, um, I just, I loved football. I loved doing all that stuff and it, it's translated into today. And, um, I just, I see something that I've never seen before, like a, a certain play or something. And I'm instantly, I'm down the rabbit hole. I'm trying to find out. So I'll reach out to a coach. I'll reach out to another scout and I'll be like, yo, what the fuck is this? Yeah. yeah. And then they'll tell me. A lot of people like don't know how much work goes into draft analysis and you know so finding much. these players and you got you know 250 players that you're looking at you're studying film of all of them seeing where they go how they would fit some people just think it's you know a two month thing you, yeah. you you know you study for the draft the draft happens and then it ends and can you give us some insight into how much goes into actually analyzing a draft class and working over these guys' game films and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, it, it pretty much, it's it's about a 10-month process for me. I can't speak for anybody else, but I, I go about 10 months, and I'll take the month of May off because I'm just burnt out. Like, I'm getting, I'm, I'm super pumped for next week, mm-hmm. but, like, I'm waking up at 2.30 in the morning with thinking about where's Jalen Petrie going in the wow. draft. <laughs> like, I'm a weirdo. Yeah. And it's like, I got to get caught up on some sleep, probably spend some time with my wife and kid and just tell them thank you for letting me chase the dream. But it starts pretty much in like June. I'll kind of start the initial process, writing down names, looking at what college has senior players and senior eligible guys. And I'll start kind of com- compiling a list. Then July, I start diving into the film. And July and August, it's kind of that initial summer taping. And I I try to get to about 50, maybe 75 guys because I'm a firm believer in quality over quantity. Yeah, I don't believe in anybody that does 300 players unless that is your full-time job. But if you're like me, you have a day job, you have this job, in other podcasts and radio spots, there's no fucking way I can do 300 players. I'm a liar if I say that. There's not enough time in the day. And And if you do... The quantity or the quality of your work is nowhere near mine. And that's why my draft guide this year only had 125 players, but I did in total about 170 guys. I have notes on, you know, 40 to 45 guys. But the thing is with my, my, my work is, you know, I have a nine to five November. I had COVID, you know, all that stuff. So it's son, that son, he's in travel, baseball, football. So it's like, I couldn't get to all that I wanted to do. And that upsets me, Mm -hmm. but really the process kind of stems just through working through all of that and then eventually you start going through and you get three to four games in on a player you you start grading that player you know if you're if you're looking at a linebacker what's his instincts like what's the change of direction how does he take on blocks and how does he tackle yeah. coverage skills i can work through that stuff um each position's a little bit different and each grade changes and i, I guess that's the best way for me to put it and then you, know, you kind of get to the combine you start seeing the athletic numbers it, it alters a little bit, and then you might do like a film recheck on a player, but really, you know, it's 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 pretty. Fun. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. A lot of casual people like they watch the combine, and that's how you fall in love with the guy. You fall in love with a Trayvon so Walker. Yeah, you fall so in love with these guys that put up crazy numbers. How much of that? 
goes into your fact you've already been casing these guys like you said for eight months mm-hmm. at this point yeah how much do these combine numbers actually go into the fact of minds of great minds like yourself and other people who actually do this for a living yeah, I mean, it, it doesn't really hold a, a ton of value to me. Like, I, I value it because it's important, right? Like, Tease Tabor is a prime example that will always, I will die mm-hmm. one day and in the casket as they're bringing me down, I'll be like, fuck you, Tease. But, <laughs> uh, you know, like, because he burnt me. Like, I thought he was a second round type guy. I was pumped when we got him, but he ran like a 4 6 five, 40, And he was a press corner because that was the system Detroit ran. And mm-hmm. when he got beat off press, he couldn't recover because yeah. he couldn't run in a straight damn line. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> it's it's one of those things where I'm like, man, I value it to a certain degree. If mm-hmm. the numbers are really bad, you know, Jeff was here and he asked me about David Bell. And I'm like, I like him, but I don't know because his numbers aren't great. Yeah. Anquan Bolton's that guy that is like that outlier of a four six five type guy, that four seven type guy. Jerry that, Rice. Yeah, th- those are the outliers. Mm-hmm. But is David Bell going to be that? Maybe, but he's not worthy of being, you know, a, a top fifty pick. Maybe yeah. at sixty six, maybe at ninety seven. I'm okay with it for the sake of the Lions. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, other than that, like I I value the research that I find on players. You know, like Perion Winfrey, I'm not going to say anything in specific. We'll talk about it off air. But, like, I got some stuff on him, some dirt from when he was getting recruited mm-hmm. and some th- him wilding out in certain spots and Damn. things like that that nobody knows about, but Damn. I do. But then I got stuff, you know, David Ajabo had a bum ankle in 2020, wasn't as productive, te- tears his Achilles. Now it's like, well, now it's, it's kind of going downhill for yeah. him because it's lower body ailment injuries. Yeah. But then you look at him and it's like he's got such a great story. Didn't start playing until he was 14, mm-hmm. was born in Scotland or born in, uh, yeah, born, you know, whatever, lived over yeah, in yeah, Scotland, yeah. and then he comes over here, and he had to reach a certain academic status that was good enough for his dad, not even the school. Yeah. His dad had to approve off of it <laughs> so he could go to, to, to uh, New Jersey and play at a private school, and then he did, and it kind of took off for him, obviously. But there's so many like different things. I love researching about players so much more than I do watching them run in a straight line. Yeah. Does that stuff – okay, yeah, research. Okay. What about uh, – somebody asked us during the live show, uh, the RASC or the RAS – is there any value to that? Yeah, I mean, I think it's good when you're looking at kind of the history of it and the fact that Kent Lee, who uh, who, who does that stuff, you know, I think it's at Math Bomb on Twitter. Great follow. Shout out. He's a great dude. Uh, got a great mustache too, by the way. But um, <laughs> he is somebody that, you know, does a lot of work on that. And to do that, it takes a lot of time. And when you're able to kind of compare and contrast, you can kind of, one, find the outliers that maybe work and don't work. But it's just, it kind of gives you a good measurement of this is kind of the threshold for the NFL. And if you're behind or under that threshold, your success is going to alter. Teams yeah. might take you just simply because of your tape or background research like I do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But then at the same time, they might take you because of your athletic score. But the tape and the and the background stuff doesn't really match because Trayvon it's Walker. really bad. Right. Yeah. Yeah. He, yeah. Him, well, we could talk about him if you want. But real quick, just because I know, I know I'm going to clip this one. <laughs> And I respect the fuck out of you. I value your opinion. But you said something about Baker Mayfield uh, underneath your breath a little bit during the beat of the year there. You you approved it in a a sense. Yeah. What? what? So you got to think of it from the Dan Campbell side of things, right? Dan Campbell wants a guy that's got energy, moxie, a chip on his shoulder. Baker Mayfield, that's the way he's born and raised. He has that chip on his shoulder all effing day long. That's a good point. And you might need that at your quarterback position to really get this offense going in the right direction. What if he sucks, though? But does he suck, though? Does he suck? Yes. Is he worse than Jared Goff? No way. I just don't Uh, think you're a winner. Yeah, it's a toss-up. I'm not saying he's great. I'm not saying he's the next Peyton. But he's you, probably better than Jared Goff. But but he's he's better than Jared Goff. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he can chuck the ball and he can do things. And sure, the antics are a little much. The the, the going on a podcast and poor me and fuck them and this and that and the dog passed out next to him like that's you don't need that right you don't need that <laughs> that stuff. I, to be honest, for me, I don't care. Like, I like that stuff. I like when people are I human. Like it, and but themselves. that was very Johnny Menzel X. Yeah, and that, for sure. And for that sure. was what he was being very much labeled as is the next Johnny yeah. Manziel yeah. coming out and that holds substance. But then you look at it, you know, in college, he's getting arrested and like there's off the field stuff and it's like, all right, you'll give guys a second chance, but now you're getting into this and you're taking everything so personal. Yeah. And it's like, dude, you're a quarterback. You're in the limelight. Like, thank God you didn't go to the jets. Like you were supposed to. 
Yeah. Because you would have been you would have been dead and buried a long time ago already. Yeah. Yeah. So like I'm okay with him because one, I think Detroit's a good spot for a quarterback if you I don't want to say suck, but if you're if you're <laughs> average, you can kind of lay low and be successful. I mean, Charlie Batch was a quarterback here for four or five years. Scott Mitchell at the time back. Dude, we have a fucking well, Scott Mitchell. We won, but but we, no, we didn't win with him. But he was won pl- a playoff game though. But no, we didn't. With Scott Mitchell. He wasn't the quarterback. It was well, Eric Kramer. Yeah, Kramer, oh, was Kramer. was Kramer. And it, it's just one of those things where it's like he was very overpaid at that time, and he was bad. Like I always remember growing up listening to my uncles and cousins and dad watching the lines and being like, holy shit, he sucks. He is so bad. And then it was like, now I look back and I'm like, yeah, he was pretty bad. <laughs> and, but now it's like, you know, with just with the Baker thing, like I'm fine with it because if it allows you to move on from Jared Goff and it gives your offense maybe the spark that it needs, Fuck. and if he's healthy, you just don't know. Dude, he, he dude, his team. Are they going to do it? No. But. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But his team right now in Cleveland stacked. The one that he had. It was. Last right? Year, yeah. And he's still like, eh, numbers. It was, it you was, saying? it was stacked. Like Nick Chubb opened up so much shit for him. And the people he was throwing to happened to be Jarvis Landry. And he had, Beckham, and he had Harim Khan. Fucking uh, David Njoku, yeah. Austin Hooper. No, I, the lady kicker himself. Kareem Hunt, yeah. yeah. I mean, look, I get it. And I. And still less than like. You know, his numbers were still like, eh, you know? He was like, injured uh, pretty, uh, like, the whole year, year last year. But the year before that, too, like, like, like the whole time there has been. Yeah, but that but that, that year before, didn't they win a playoff game? I'm fairly confident they won a playoff yeah, game. But the team, though, we don't have that team. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like everything team, around him needs team, to be, like. Team. Yeah, but they didn't have Perfect. that team around him. Last year? When they won the playoff game? No, I'm saying, like, when he got there, they didn't have that team. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? For so, sure. yeah, yeah. like, it takes time to build it around a certain quarterback, and maybe that's what Detroit's doing with Jared Goff just in general. They're building it around him to let him manage and throw for 20, 25 touchdowns and 6, 7, maybe 10 interceptions and 35, 3,700 yards and let Jamal Williams and DeAndre Swift and whatever running back do the rest of the work. Yeah. I think that's how they're built Fuck for that. now. Fuck the picker, Mayfield. So, <laughs> what what are your like? We talked about the MBDE. You're a Malik guy. You want you know that if it's not Hutch, you said it should be Malik. Is yeah. what is what you're saying from the Lions' perspective? And that's I heard Lomas Brown on 97.1 today said they're taking Malik Willis. You know Scott said it a long time ago. They're taking Malik Willis. Everybody's talking about what's the, they Corey said they said, would take. Corey said they're taking Malik Willis. Like, what is the the percentage that Malik, if Aiden Hutchinson is off oh, the that's board? That's tough, man. What is, is it like 80%? Like, you have to be in the organization to know. 90%? I like, would probably say about 70, 75. 75? Oh. I mean, <sighs> way higher than I, I could be off. I, it could be cave on. I, like, yeah. I mean, I was talking to Braylon and Stick earlier. They were talking, you know, they were talking cave on. And it could be. Adam said the same thing. It could be. Just because that's the betting odds, that doesn't mean shit. That's why it's yeah, there. Yeah. Yeah. That's how Vegas gets you. Because mm-hmm. you're going to put 100 on that. Gotcha, so, bitch. And exactly. Yeah. Boom. And guess who's got plus 1,100 odds right now? Malik Willis. Yeah. So it's one of those things where it's like, I heard it a couple weeks ago. I saw it down at the Senior Bowl firsthand. And I heard about it down at the Senior Bowl. I heard those rumblings yeah. of Malik Willis at two. The Lions really like him. Yeah. I drank beers with the Lions coaching staff. I mean, that's how's your experience at the Senior Bowl? That's you fucking awesome. Get into that. I love if you think of like I'm just going to go to a shit town and I'm not saying it in a bad way, like just a little like hole in the wall town. Yeah. Go to Mobile, Alabama. You'll <laughs> see one, you'll see some interesting people, but great food, great people, great drinks and good football and you get to do it for a whole week with people such as myself. You get to nerd out on football. It is amazing. Yeah. It's absolutely amazing. So Yeah, I mean, but with, like, Malik, and we'll talk about the Senior Bowl some more, too, but, you know, Malik, I heard about it down there. I heard about the Steelers a lot down there. There's no way the Steelers can get from 20 to inside the top 10 unless they're salvaging a lot of their draft. And that's not what they're – they're not built like that. Like, Mm -hmm. they they just don't do that, and I think that's why Desmond Ritter is a very intriguing option for them. I like Ritter a lot. But Willis is that guy that I just think, when I heard that the Liberty Pro Day – I'm going to see future Detroit Lion quarterback Malik Willis, and that was three, four weeks ago. I mean, I've heard about it for months now. It, like, it just that's why I put the 70, 75 percent. It just it's it just makes sense. I'm so down for it. I want it to happen. We need excitement. We need a spark. That's yeah. that's the guy. That's the excitement. It, in literal terms, I don't care what Adam says. That's the cocaine. It, Malik it, Willis is the cocaine. It, yeah, yeah. 100%. And and I will say this: like if if it if if they would have never brought him in for a visit. Between now and the in the draft, then I'd be like, okay, yeah, Kayvon. 
Yeah. Or, yeah, Hutchinson. Or, yeah, Trayvon Walker. Mm-hmm. But the fact that they just brought him in yesterday, that tells me everything I need to know. Yeah. That yeah. he was here for a reason. And they're, I essentially laying down the groundwork and saying, hey, check this place out. Because if you don't go one yeah. and our guy, our top guy is off at one, you're our guy. Yeah. And maybe they didn't say it like that because I, if I'm a quarterback, I'd be like, well, no, I'm your guy. Yeah. But yeah. maybe that's what they're doing to test him to see mm-hmm. one, how he responds to that. Yeah. I, again, I, you know how they ask those combine questions, you know, they're asking if your mom's a prostitute and this, this, and that yeah. it's very odd things that they ask. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm not, and, and, <laughs> and I'm not bullshit. Like those are legit questions. They ask it's Darius guys. They asked his mom, like, you know, is your mom, is your mom a stripper? Like what the, f- yeah. what, what kind of question is that? Yeah. yeah. That's like when that, that guy uh, that, that we were talking about. Like, How big your dick is. Yeah. No, well, well, <laughs> yeah, there's the one thing you, you, you like, want to change about yourself. He's like, bigger dick. We were like, Oh, Trey for, Adams, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm like, no, you can't be mad at him for answering that when they're asking just as ridiculous questions. Yeah. I'm saying, like, Dude, I remember when people were calling him like a top 50 pick and he was going to go and be a steal because he had a bad back. And then I injuries, yeah. And then he, he's out of the league already. I'm like, yeah. I, I wasn't touching him. I, that, there was no way. Mm. Bad back as an offensive lineman. Yeah. yeah. In the words of the mafia, forget about it. Forget, forget about, about it. it. Forget about you, it. There's someone with a bad back in the Detroit Lions now on the defensive line with Levi and Zarike. What, what do you, what's your take on that? I never liked that pick to begin with. I, <laughs> really? I, I, he was in a very, he's in a very weird spot as a player because he's in that 275, 280 range. So Devontae Wyatt, kind of a lesser? Or? Well, Devontae Wyatt's like 305. But Jesus Christ, is he really? Yeah, he's 6'3", 305. Oh I think it's 303 to be exact, but uh, who am I? Um, anyways, yeah, Levi was somebody I just, I didn't really like his, his film, but I, 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 like, I saw the explosiveness, but I'm just like, what do you play with him? He gave me very like Solomon Thomas type vibes that, that 283 sub package defensive tackle type of pass rusher that you put in on third down. But other than that, like he's not going to consistently play up front. And the fact that they took him as early as they did, I was like, man, mm-hmm. you could have had somebody else because you got to Lee McNeil and you could have had somebody else and you could have took yeah. that. You could have taken that type of player in this draft in the fourth or fifth round. What about the? Um, so obviously we're talking about the Lions moving to like a a, a four two five or just like gen- in general the NFL is kind of moving towards that way. I'm not I'm not bringing it up at number two, but a guy like Kyle Hamilton like God. isn't there like a, like because I stopped looking at him as a safety I started looking at him as like a, like a linebacker almost mm-hmm. because that, like that awesome while the reason why I backed off of Hamilton a little bit is like okay he could almost be that little tweeter or like. JOK, the same way he is too. Like, yeah, like an Isaiah Simmons in a sense, and that's yeah. that's who I think it's like very comparable with him. But you mentioned JOK, like, what do you do with him? Where do you play him? I can totally see that. But when I watch him, like, I I don't see another Kyle Hamilton in this draft per se. Yeah, but somebody that they've done a lot of extensive research on is Kirby Joseph out of Illinois, who I have as a top seventy five player. I think he's if I. If I could put money on a third round pick today, I would I would run to the bank, take out a hundred, and be like, "Here you go, pick sixty six, Kirby Joseph." Didn't they have him in for a visit too? They brought him in for a visit, yeah. so he would be somebody that I think is very intriguing because he can play as that single high safety in kind of a cover one scheme, but also he's very versatile and rangy. And he had five interceptions this past year, so the ball skills are there. He can tackle. Not anything like a Brian Cook out of Cincinnati, and probably not even like a, a Jaquan Brisker out of a Penn State, but. I think you get him at 66. He can be a buzz defender for you, and that's essentially when a, a safety is like here, and then they just kind of move forward four or five yards, and they buzz, in a sense, upfield. Yeah. And, and that's that buzz defender that I'm talking about. And, 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 he, and he could play even over the top as Tracy Walker comes down or another safety that they might have to come down and play up towards the box and get anything in like that mid hook or on those crossers or those dig routes or something. Mm-hmm. But with him, I mean... I love I like Kirby Joseph a lot. I'm surprised people don't talk about him as much yeah. as they probably sh- should. But he he would be the one that I think that they are really going to value. Yeah, I feel like nobody talks about that guy. No, I don't know who he was until you brought him up. What about wide receivers? We talked about wide receivers a little bit, and everybody's saying this is a deep class. You know, you got different people saying Easy oh, says it all the times, a dime a dozen. You shouldn't go after one of these first round guys. Yeah, and how how can you see a wide receiver fitting into the to the Dan Campbell? Um, uh, fucking brad holmes scheme like we know brad holmes likes him late he gets he gets the robert woods he gets the cooper cup he gets amon Ra. like yeah. well, how do you see that on this draft well one guy i don't think a lot of people talk about for the lions and it is a deep draft i mean i'm, I'm not gonna lie i think it's um 
It's it's a draft to definitely get one. I got five first round grades on receivers, five in the top twenty two of my board. And I I mean, we could see Jamison Williams as the first receiver off the board. I, I would pro- I would probably take that bet. Um Garrett Wilson could very well be in that top ten. Atlanta, maybe, maybe, maybe the Jets at ten. Um, I personally like Drake London a lot, but for the Lions' sake, maybe at 32, because I don't see them taking a, a receiver at two. I mean, yeah. that would genuinely no. that would genuinely piss me off. I'd yeah. probably oh, shoot yeah. myself uh, if yeah. they fucking. I mean, I would. No I, joke. I'd be fucking hurt. I all three shots that D Max got up there, I would take them all. Yeah. and I don't do shots, and like yeah. that, that would be just. I that's just nuts. But it's depressing. It's yeah, just the thought of it is like that's very. That's same old lions. For I'm not you. getting mad. Why are we even? Why do you say that? <laughs> right, like, like, that angers me up. Right, yeah, like, I'm yeah, fired I'm, up. I'm literally, is like what the f- two? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. no. So I I like Jahan Dotson, and I think he is somebody that is one of the better receivers in this draft. And it's interesting as we look at draft position and overs and odds. He yeah. was at 32 and a half. I I want to say it was bet online. He had him at they had him at 32 and a half, and I find that interesting because obviously we pick 32. And if he gets passed by the Packers and maybe the Chiefs, if he's there at 32, I would run and take him because really? he, he can play inside and outside. The majority of his snaps, over 1,000 of his snaps, 1,200-plus actually, were on the outside. He can play wide. He's very smooth and silky as a as a pass catcher and as a route runner. But as a, as a hands catcher, he's the most natural, I think, of any player in this draft consistently making that diamond and consistent actually watching his tape and, and, yeah. ass, and, like, and just always catching away from his pretty. right yeah always catching away so i think he'd be really interesting another one george pickens out of georgia you think about what the lions like to do scott's probably talked about him a ton because i know he likes him but the lions want to run the football there's probably not a better blocking receiver in the draft than george pickens he bullies guys I mean, he takes them and launches them. Yeah. Like we uh, saw him bully Vincent Gray a couple times in the uh, college football game when yeah. they played against Michigan. He flexed on him a couple yeah. Of times. Oh yeah, oh yeah. He was like, that. yeah, you know, like <laughs> yeah. doing that. And it, like you think of like Super Smash Brothers, right? Like when the guys like run, like the guys are running at each other, and you hit them, and then you knock them off. Like yeah. that's literally him. And it's like he does it consistently, Ooh. but but he makes some very ac- acrobatic catches, and he's just a fun player. And I think at thirty two, thirty four, it's a realistic spot for him. I think he's probably a he is a top fifty player, probably more so in forty five to fifty range. But he's not going to be there on that second turn, and I don't want to trade up for him. I would just take him at thirty four if he's there. Um, <laughs> I, I'm expecting Nicobe Dean to to be there at thirty two. You obviously you're talking about the wide receiver there too. Like out of those two, who are you taking? And obviously you have the safeties in that conversation too. Like at thirty two, like say Brisker, uh, Pickens, Dotson, and Nicobe are all there. Well, you can get two of them, you know, for sure. Because you're right back at 34, yeah. but at 32, just be safe. Like you want that guy. I think I would take. I would probably take the receiver first, um, just because whichever one I value more, I would probably take Dotson because I think the one that helps your offense quite a bit. And then if I know I can get a Brisker or a Dean at 34, that's a win-win. And if I can get that receiver, as we've talked about on BDE today, you know, mm-hmm. receivers are getting all the money, and that's why Debo Samuel today asked for a trade. He, yeah. he wants $30 million, and it's like he's probably not going to realistically get that. But you, 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 this guy wants he wants top wide receiver money, and it's like, well, if I can get him for that fifth-year option, I might be able to avoid that for a season. So I would take that receiver first mm-hmm. and then worry about that defender and maybe that safety or linebacker is that player, just depending on what Jacksonville does. I would be worried that Dean's not there at 34. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, you look at Jacksonville, they got rid of Miles Jack. Mm-hmm. They probably need somebody with some aggressive play style similar to Miles Jack. And I think Dean kind of fits that. So, um, other than that, though, yeah, I would go receiver first, then the, the defender. Where do you see Debo Samuel landing? It's, he requested a trade today from the 49ers, like you said. He probably he saw a fucking Christian Kirk get paid $17 million a year. Dude, fuck He's, that. He, he, Trent Baalke messed that. everything up for everybody. Yeah, everything. literally. He paid Christian Kirk $17 million a year. Devontae Adams getting, what, 25 It will. It will hover around that for quite some time. Yeah. I'm, ass- I'm assuming inflation, bro. Everybody, right? That's Every- just a huge fucking Gas prices jump, are everywhere. Um, no, I just, I think, I think realistically, Baltimore's an intriguing fit at 14. They've got some draft capital. They could maybe just, if a, if a couple receivers that they value at 14 are gone, maybe they're just like, hey, We've got plenty of draft capital to get an offensive lineman later in this draft. We're gonna we're gonna move forward and, and get rid of fourteen, get Debo, pay him, make Lamar happy, that'd be and, huge. and that's your threat. Yeah. Lamar and Debo in a backfield running the option. 
Forget oh, about it. Yeah, good right? luck, Garden Mack. Forget about it. Yeah, might as well go on. Green, Green Bay makes a lot of sense, and I, I will say Baltimore, I said that to, to Braylon, and he was like, man, uh, Greg Roman, that makes a ton of sense. Yeah. But um, yeah. Green Bay, I think 22, 28, they didn't pay Devontae, and I think they didn't pay Devontae, one, for a reason, not because they didn't want him. One, he didn't really want to be there anymore, but also because I think they knew that the market for receivers was going to kind of go all over the place. And I think they kind of know, hey, we might be able to get a guy because he's unhappy somewhere. And and maybe that maybe it is Debo. And Matt LaFleur, I mean. They might could, fuck around and get two. Yeah. Like, Peter, draft, like, Peter LaFleur. Bro, if, if, if fucking Rodgers got Jamison Williams, do you think he'd be the first even after the, the injury and everything? Yeah. I think, the, I think he's good. I, think I, he I would keep tab. I would definitely keep tab on the on the Jets. Yeah. That's that's what right. I, I heard. Jets were already trying to call John Lynch. People have been saying like Olave and, and London were the number ones, but no, I mean, and they are. I mean, they are very talented. But teams sometimes go off of speed, explosiveness, burst, and he's don't worry long. about the don't worry about the injury. I mean, look at Jalen Waddle. He went sixth overall last year, and he couldn't even walk. He tried yeah. playing with screws in his ankle, and he couldn't play. I didn't even know that. Yeah, the national championship. He, yeah. he was like on crutches, went and suited up and was like, put me in coach. And he goes out there and yeah. he's like. Uh, Can't even run a five yard out. <laughs> yeah, you know, he sounds like water boy. Like. But yeah, no, I mean, I think Jameson could certainly go in that in that spot. But uh, for Debo, Green Bay makes sense at, at either 22, 28 if they part ways. I said Detroit, get rid of 32. <laughs> they have apparently made calls according to Ian Rappaport. So. Really? Hell yeah. Fuck but, yeah. Detroit's made calls? Well, so is like every team. Yeah. So, but he like ta- he didn't tag them, but hashtag Lions, Jets, wow. uh, I want to say Panthers or something like that, and maybe another team. So he had a couple hashtags. Fucking, man, at least we're making calls. Fuck. He yeah. was a guy too. Like, I don't think golf has, a, uh, he's not that accurate. So I think he needs like speedy fucking guys. Yeah. Or guys who do, the, this is the weird fucking shit that Debo does. All kinds of bubble screens, all that crazy weird shit. Run, run the split the run the split backfield with yeah. Debo and Amon Ra. Yeah, dude. Back there. That would be fuck fucking bro. sweet. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah, that actually, I would not. That would be fucking sick. I guess I wouldn't be mad. Especially the or, market's going to be what it is. Yeah, or you could have Swift and him back there and yeah. like you do that. St. Brown Brown's running yeah. that and Hawkinson Pops up the seam, the dude. Middle, yeah. Oh my God. That'll be so. He. Oh, he. I mean, anywhere he goes, he's going to open the offense. But yep. if you bring him in here and he can just like take Amon Ra under his wing, yeah. like, my little be Bambino, nasty. and just how teach you, him how to be. What do you feel about guys who are like their pen is like a slot guy, like Amon Ra? Let's say he's like a slot guy, but like a receiver, you can almost play like. Oh, well, and it, like, yeah, I feel like it doesn't really matter. Anymore. I mean, some, I was, yeah, yeah. some some guys are limited. Like a Calvin Austin will probably play. He's out of Memphis. He'll probably play a lot of the slot. <laughs> like he just that's what he is. He's he, he's going to try his best on the outside. And there will be times that he plays on the outside because there there are true X receivers, but good offensive coordinators and good offenses move their guys around. Yeah. And like when I watch Calvin Austin, sometimes I even think of like Taylor Gabriel when he was with the Bears and with the the Falcons and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Like they moved him around in a lot of different ways. Yeah. And it's just it's just one of those things where I think with these guys, like you can move them and if, if they're versatile enough to play anywhere, you're good. But if that guy only played as an X receiver, you might be a little bit screwed. But yeah. Yeah. I like Jahan Dotson gets pegged as like this super slot receiver. And I just I think that is so incorrect. If you watch his tape you watch him on the outside. No, yeah, he does everything. He does yeah. everything. Yeah, that's the first thing. I, well, the first thing I noticed was like the hands. It's like pretty the way he catches. Like it's just like how you learn to catch. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like the fucking bring it in shit. It's like Dumb and Dumber, Pretty Bird, Pretty Bird. <laughs> yeah. Who do Who do you see being not not strictly a wide receiver, but your Amon Ra for the Lions this year? Your guy that you're gonna get in the fourth or fifth round. That's gonna come in. He's gonna make an impact. He's not gonna. Be the person they expect, you know, but if he comes in there and he makes a big impact his first year. Man, I, I'll i go with two guys. Um, for starters, I'll say, I, I talked about him on BDE a little bit, Khalil Shakir. Drops are an issue there, but yeah, 18 in his career, but he's got a very natural release off the line of scrimmage that it, it looks like he's been doing it for a long time. Mm-hmm. And those guys that can get off the line and, and defeat press and work their hands – are that important when you got him in the slot or out wide, whatever. So I think when you look at him, it's like one of those things where it's like this guy, I could I could get in that fourth round and he's probably going to start from day one for me. Yeah. Um, the other guy's Velas Jones. A lot of people 
I'm really hesitant on him because he's going to be 25 years old. He's already got a master's degree. He was catching touchdown passes from Sam Darnold at USC at oh, one point. Oh, hell yeah. Damn. But he's one of those guys, like you watched him at the Senior Bowl, he can fly vertically. He's very shifty within his routes. He understands the nuances that go with running routes and making those types of plays. So I really like his game, and I, I think he's just somebody that if you if you took him in that fourth round, maybe even in that fifth round, one, you're going to play him right away because he's 24, 25 years of age. Got his head on his shoulders, but he can make an impact for you. Okay. okay. So this morning, I'm in my underwear at the kitchen table doing my homework on. Don't need that picture. <laughs> I do my homework on the linebackers because I know you're coming on the show. Yeah. And this guy come across, Troy Anderson. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I, I like him. Is, yeah. Is that even like, uh, like how late will he be if he get, when he gets picked up? And like, what do you think of him? I, I think he's probably of a third-round type of guy. He's out of Montana State, former quarterback, former running back. He plays the linebacker position that way. Yeah. And he moved to linebacker because basically they didn't need him on offense anymore in college. Yeah. But he's a, I mean, he's a tackling machine. He gets his nose in there all the time. Um, he is certainly somebody that tested way better than I think anybody expected. But that's a guy that's you know a three-sport athlete in high school. And everybody sees what he can do, and they're just like, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring this guy in, and I'm going to let his speed do some of the work. And I'll, I'll teach him kind of the fundamentals of the linebacker position. But if you're not afraid to tackle, I think that's that's the big thing. And and he can take on contact pretty well. So, I I mean, if if he was the pick at 66, I'm not mad at that at all yeah. for the Lions' sake. But I certainly think a team in the third round will, will take him. The key... He just looked the part to me. He looks the part, but the key is paying attention to uh, teams in the second round with multiple picks. Indianapolis, Seattle, Atlanta... These teams have multiple second-round picks. They could do some damage on some of these guys that are great athletes yeah. and have a lot of potential. Or, yeah. obviously, they could put those picks together and go and, and uh, tr- trade up and get a, you know, Atlanta, for example. Put both second-rounders together, move back into the first round with maybe Detroit, and get Matt Corral. You know, you never know. Man, this draft's going to be so fun. because yeah. like You just don't know what to expect. Oh, yeah. Normally, you no, have, like, dude. a pretty good idea. Yeah. This This year, one, two, three, you know, yeah. This is legit like the poker card type draft or poker face type draft where you just have no effing idea. And the Lions are playing it tight to the chest, man. They send seven guys to see Kayvon, then Dan Campbell says, I don't like Kayvon. That ain't a, that, say, that's all smoke, you know, though. There's yeah, no, yeah. that's what it is, though. The smoke, they're, it, they're, they don't. People don't know he wasn't one of the do. seven guys to see him, but he also did come in for a visit. So. Yeah. And he's been here, I think, twice, actually, which is very intriguing. But with Kayvon, it's with the, the Dan Campbell thing. Mm-hmm. There's no way he actually said that. That's a media member. Oh, making yeah, that's that up. Albert Breer talking. Yeah, exactly. That's just, right. yeah. That's just that to get three medias. Yeah, yeah, that's just clicks to get to your page right. and check out my Monday morning quarterback article, and which is great <laughs> stuff. I love all that stuff. Yeah. But – the key is Dan Campbell was asked about, you know, players with bad behavior and stuff like that before. I think during the combine, and a lot of it obviously stems probably to Kayvon and other players in this draft. Yeah. But with that, he talked about a former teammate of his that had a lot of issues as far as alcohol problems. He loved football. He knew football, but he just drank way too much, and he, he shrieked of alcohol every day. He didn't name drop that guy. He could have. He could have been like, fuck you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No way he name dropped Kayvon and be like, nah, I, bad attitude. I don't like this guy. Yeah. No yeah. way. And that same, actually, in that same scenario, didn't Campbell say, like, he was good as fuck or whatever? Like, right, but but also telling people that Kayvon's no good, what what does that do you any good for if you're trying to trade yeah. out of that spot? Yeah. yeah, if I'm not mistaken, that article was from Bleacher Report, and it was from his source, Albert Breer, who got it from another source that wasn't fucking in the Lions organization. So it was like bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. Yeah. yeah. Someone trying to get Kayvon to drop to them. Probably right. Jets, for real. And like you said on the, uh, on the po- or on BDE, fucking Ben McAdoo saying, yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, what happened? Wait, Sam, what happened he said Sam do? Sam Darnold is our starting quarterback. Huh. He's like, I've been trying uh, to get to talk to you guys better, and then he was like, "Oh, but I kind of put my foot in my mouth with that Sam Darnold quarterback or with that Sam Darnold comment." Yeah, so he was talking like they what? asked they asked him about like the starting quarterback or whatever, and exactly what he says, he's like, "Yeah, no, Sam's going to be the starting quarterback for this team moving forward." Then he goes, "Actually, I probably just put my foot in my mouth uh, about have already naming a starter this early in the process or whatever." Yeah. So my role probably walked in was like. Yeah, I, I, I think it's pretty much like some people are speculating like they're not going to draft a quarterback. Wow. They've done a lot of extensive research on offensive tackles. I know that. I think the player they really like is Ike McQuanu out of NC State. I think that's the tackle that they would, I don't want to say prefer to have, but the player that they would really like fits to him. have. Yeah, fits what they're looking for. 
But, I mean, if Evan Neal was to fall to them, I could see them jumping on him. Charles Cross, I honestly, I don't know if Charles Cross is going to be there uh, because I, I think if... if New York so, likes him. If, yeah, the Giants really like him. And if Sauce has gone at, at four or three, then I think Cross is the guy at five. Who do you think, regardless of position, regardless of need, is the best player in this draft? Is it Hutch? Is it Hamilton? Hamilton? Is it... You know, uh, is it Neil or is it one, is it one of those big offensive linemen? Like who who is your number one guy on talent alone, not with need? Yeah, it's Hutch. I mean, it for me, it's Hutch. I just I I know a lot of like Kayvon might be like that just natural pass rusher, but Hutchinson, man, he just creates havoc every time he's on the field, and it's in the run game, it's in the passing game, and the reason why is like yeah, you know, Braylon said this. He's like two years ago he had three sacks, and this year he has fourteen, and I get that. But two years ago, he wasn't used the same way. You know, Don Brown wasn't using him the same way. They bring it, you know, they, they bring in a new yeah, de- different coordinator. Professor Blitz. Yeah, they bring in a defensive coordinator that actually knows what he's talking about and doing. And no disrespect to Don, he's a great, he's a great guy. I've listened to him speak before. He, I mean, you talk about <laughs> running, sorry, Don. running through a wall, dude, I'll break through this glass wall uh, for that guy. But it's just one of those things where I, I think when you look at him, it's like he can, he can just, I don't want to say do it all. Mm-hmm. But he can almost do it all. There's no concerns within his game of off the field, on the field, stopping the run. Like when I talk about Arnold Abacadie, the first question is, well, what, what do you think of him against the run? Okay, that's fine. We can have that conversation because he's not consistent against it, but he's good enough. Yeah. Kayvon, we already know what we're talking about there. Trayvon, we already know. Limited production, limited snap count. Why is that? I don't think it's, I just, I think it's because he's just not, he's not ready. He's not very good. He did not develop into the five-star player yeah. that they thought he was going to be. Kayvon? Trayvon. 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 Okay, and and Kayvon is just, he, he similar to like uh, Trevor Lawrence, right? Trevor Lawrence, Heisman Trophy candidate, number one recruit, number one player everywhere he's gone. Whole, yeah. mm-hmm. At some point, you kind of, I don't want to say you put it in cruise Nitpick. control, but he gets nitpicked a lot and kind of picked, taken apart because he didn't set the world on fire while others. Last year. Yeah. And, and yeah. it's just, it's one of those things where I think with Kayvon, it's that same thing, right? He had the COVID year, kind of his first year back and, if if I know I'm gonna be a top five pick, why in the hell would I go balls yeah. to the wall to get yes. him? And that one the one play I saw too was like uh I saw it was the Utah game. Yeah. And then I looked, it was like the last game of the year. It was in the fourth quarter. Mm-hmm. The one where he hot. <laughs> I fucking don't it's hot as fuck in here. Um I can't get out of it though. <laughs> go ahead, man. I could we could we could wrap it up if you want. Actually oh, whatever you want to do. Um I, I, I could talk draft Dude, all F and day. I could talk all day too. Yeah, I, I was gonna ask you something. Oh yeah, so all right. So with, with Aiden right now, just now, like, are you saying like he's the best, or like, he's like he's just, like the right, best right now? Like the, you plug him in anywhere, and he's good to go. Yeah, he's the best right now. I think you just safer pick. You plug him in. I go safe when I go top of the draft. It's just kind of my mo. Makes like, sense. And, and really with any like a lot of positions, it's like even especially like, this year. Yeah, and even in like quarterback, right? Like if I look at a quarterback, I normally go safe. Love Malik Willis. I love the upside, but there's a reason why Kenny Pickett's my number one quarterback. Again, we're talking one point that separates the two. Yeah. yeah. But Kenny Pickett's safer to me because I think day one, he could start for a team like Carolina. And I think down the road, he could be comparable to like a Derek Carr or something like that. I think when you watch him play, they're very similar. Like one day here down in the next eight days, I'll put a clip together of Kenny Pickett rolling right and left and Derek Carr rolling right and left. And I swear to God, it's the same guy. Yeah. Funny. So that's interesting. Tiny have... hands. <laughs> so do I, dude. Look at these White Castle sliders, baby. White Castle, call me. Whop- Whopper Juniors. Yeah. Um, that's interesting because you say Pickett's number one, but you would still go with Willis at two. Why yeah. is that? And I, I, it's because of the upside type deal, right? Like, okay. if you, if you're going to the safe pick is Hutchinson, but you don't need safe at quarterback. Honestly, I think you kind of already have safe at quarterback right now mm-hmm. in Jared Goff. The issue with Jared Goff is he just makes too much damn money. But if he takes a pay cut in a sense and is allowing that team to invest in other areas to win, it's a win-win for you. But he's able to manage the game. Malik might be able to take the game to the next level because of his mobility, his arm. He needs work. His accuracy is an issue. His touch, his anticipation, it's not there. But the issue is he's also playing at Liberty. Yeah. Like that's like us running Dude, out there. And that's uh, that I get that's why it's so fucking pissed when people are like, Did you watch him in college? Yeah, did you fucking watch him in college? Yeah. His team is ass, bro. Yeah. His offensive line was fucking terrible. Yep. Like, I think it was like like PTSD every time we take off running because it's fucking Dude, they're fucking terrible. He's running for it was his such life. A bad team. Yeah. They're talking about the old miss game. I'm like, did you not watch the fucking game? Like, yeah, no, you've watched Syracuse game, same thing. He gets the snap, and as he's getting the ball so out annoying. of shotgun. 
he's already basically having to evade the pocket because there's penetration right here. Yeah. Well, and it's just one of those things. I mean, I, I, I'm going off of upside on him. Yeah. And yeah. maybe I should make him my QB1, and maybe one day I'll learn on that. Like, same thing with Kyler Murray. He wasn't my top quarterback when he came out. Dwayne Haskins was, I thought, RIP. But I thought Haskins yeah. was going to be... Fuck. Yeah, right? But I thought Haskins right. was going to be a safe pick that kind of developed, and it just never worked out for him. And Malik Willis, why I'm so hype about him, I'm not saying saying these are the same guys and this is who he's going to be, but this is everything you heard from Josh Allen when right. Josh Allen was coming up. Yep. Yeah. Big dude, huge arm, good athlete, yep. shitty school, but his, <laughs> but his you know his accuracy is not there. Right. And, and we see what Josh, Josh Allen turned into the best quarterback in the league. Like, Jeez. if that could happen... To any type of degree, right. to Malik Willis, I would be extremely happy. Quarterback yeah, he, yeah, he's this big dude, runs a 4 4, can throw it 70 yards flat footed. Yeah. Like, I, come on. Malik's you know, a little right. more compact, but no, yeah. Still, like it's, yeah, he's not as tall. You know. Is there any projects like that, though, other than like Allen that's worked out that you guys can think of? <sighs> Jamarcus Russell. No. Yeah, <laughs> man. Oh, he could have. Uh, that raw, and been. then they, like, someone was able to mold them. I mean, I, I like big. Honestly, I, are we yeah, saying in the first round or just in general? Go in general, I guess, because I want to feel good about taking Malik because I am scared as fuck to take him. I would but. say Russell Wilson. I mean, he was the third rounder. and you were all like that, though? Or? I mean, I think similar to like how I feel about Kenny Pickett, what you see is what you're going to get with him. Yeah. And I think the same thing with Russell Wilson. He had really intriguing mobility, a relatively big arm, not as probably not as big as Allen or, or Willis or obviously Stafford. Yeah. But – you take him in the third round, and you're just like, if I can scheme around this guy or scheme for him, it's going to work out. And I think that was kind of the case with him. And I think that could be the case for a couple of these guys in this draft. You take yeah. Russell Wilson, and then you pay Matt Flynn $130 million. Made, no, the field. Field. made, yeah. certain, made no sense. <laughs> of one game torching a shitty line secondary. I don't think they – yeah, I know. That's why I was going to make a point on Jared Goff. Dude's the goat. Like, oh, he went Super Bowl. He had that shootout with, with fucking uh, Mahomes. Yeah. It's like – yeah, Matt Flynn had a fucking shootout. Against but but I think too. they knew Matt Flynn was yeah. going in. Like, it's almost, you can almost put that hand in hand with like the second pick, for example. So like, you you paid Matt Flynn because you knew he was demanding that type of money. He was going to get that money from somewhere. Seattle was just dumb enough to do it. <laughs> but they also, it was like, what if this guy is what he's supposed to be? Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, well, let me get this guy and then let me draft the quarterback just to be yeah. safe. And it's kind of the same deal here. Like, we know Jared Goff is ass, but let me bring him in and have him as my guy, as my bridge, yeah. and maybe it works out. But now you're in this spot where you can take a guy who I compare to Russell Wilson and Malik mm -hmm. Willis and hope that the upside hits. Yeah. yeah. Can I ask? Uh, ask whatever you want. Because you said something about Russell Wilson. I love Russell Wilson. Like I'm like one of the biggest fans of Russ. Yeah. For to me, I mean the talent's there, but Russ I think the thing that I love about him the most, he's just a fucking gamer. Like. When shit hits the fan and he's back there running around, he's 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 calm. He still looks to throw. And he finds somebody open. And Rodgers has that too, but he also has elite ability to fucking throw. Yeah. Like, it's crazy shit. I mean, like, Russ has one of the most prettiest deep balls in the NFL, man. Russ That's... is pretty. Russ is definitely a pretty Thanks, thrower. Thanks, guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Huge cock. <I'm> just, yeah. <laughs> Horse cock. <guy. Horse laughs> <guy. laughs> but, like, is there anybody in this draft that, I guess, like, manipulates the game that way? I'm saying, like, when shit just hits the fan, they're able to, like, have Shit, the patience still and make a play out of it, fan. you know, instead of running or... Yeah, I mean, I, I think Malik does it really well. I think Kenny does it pretty well. And I, I know I said Malik kind of puts pressure on himself and he evades too quickly. Yeah. But, like... PTSD on him. Yeah, but if, but if he... That, yeah. Like, he has the arm strength to stand in there, take the shot, and throw it 60 yards down the field, similar to, like, a Donovan McNabb. That's one pro comparison that's not been talked about for Malik. Mm. Similar frames. You know, Donovan was thick in the lower body. Thick, thick boy. Thick, thick boy, you know? Thick boy. And, uh, exactly. And it's one of those things where it's like, I, I don't know, man. Like, I, I would go him. I would go Kenny because he improvises pretty well. At least this season he did. And then beyond that, like, in this draft, I would like to say Desmond Ritter because he does a, a decent job standing in there. I Sam Howell's not consistent enough for me, and I think at times he just takes unnecessary shots. Matt Corral, kind of the same thing. Like, those guys get kind of locked in on one read this past year, and, yeah. like, they're just... Yeah. But Carson Strong, don't even. I'm not talking about. We can't talk about him, but he's a bum. No, Bailey Zappi. Fuck no, Bailey Zappi. Bailey Zappi's fine, but it's like Case Keenum 2.0. Yes, that's, so, that's at the yeah. end of the day. Yeah. Yeah. I, like, I hate that guy. Yeah. Hey, people bring him up. Oh, we'll just get Bailey Zappi in the sixth round. It's just you're wasting a fucking pick. Don't, yeah. don't pick Bailey Zappi. Yeah. But yeah. with with the Malik Willis thing, is he goes 
what if he, you know, everybody talks about he runs away too fast. You know, he doesn't feel the pressure. He just gets out of there. But like you guys said, he was playing at Liberty with that shit offensive line. Yeah, he goes from that Liberty offensive line to, to see. fucking Jonah Jackson, Frank Rag, now Taylor Decker, and Penny Sewell. Yep. Like, yep. That, that's going to do a lot for a guy's in a, confidence. In a year on the bench, like, learning. You yes. Know, like, and you got four potential Pro Bowl offensive linemen standing in front of As much as I don't like golf, and I don't think he, like, reads, the, progresses through his reads, like, like, I would want him to. Yeah. I think he makes the safe throw most of the time. That's why you see a lot of the fucking check downs. And, like, Bleak learning under that and also having the ability to go deep and make fucking, like, big plays. Yep. Like, and I think it's a perfect scenario for him to grow under. Read more than once. Yeah, and, I, I mean, you have you have kind of some safe plays in the offense now that you can throw to. And, obviously, like, you can run the ball 30 times a game like they want to with Swift yeah. and Williams. Mm-hmm. But then you can throw it to Swift. You could, like, check down to the flats. You could throw underneath to Hawkinson or have him run up the seam. You could obviously find Amon or St. Brown. You got DJ Chark now who... Who has his speed. I mean, yeah. And even if he doesn't create a bunch of separation, he always is coming down with huge, big-time catches. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the key is this guy could do that for Malik and this offense. So I think it's it's really something that's important. So I I would definitely consider Malik 100%. What is it? I'm sorry, Spence, you guys are... Uh-huh. Is there any hope for golf? Like, what do you see in him that he does well, that he, <laughs> that he does bad? Because obviously, I, I just said, like, I don't think he progresses his reads, and I think he has a little bit of a, of a duck wobbly, like, like toss. I fucking hate Jared Goff. But, like, <laughs> is there, can you sell me on him? Like, is there anything, like, I, 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 I don't know, like... He's got a hot girlfriend. He's yeah, hot girlfriend. I mean, I, honestly, he's just, he's very good underneath short areas of the field, and he's good to manage the game for you. Like I said, mm. if that's your guy to get 22 touchdowns, seven picks, 3,500 yards, and you're good with that, cool. If that's the type of quarterback your offense needs, which is maybe what this offense needs, cool. But at yeah. the end of the day, like... Do you want to be the Titans? Yeah, do you, you know, right. Yeah. Do, you, do you want to be the he's Titans? worse than Tannehill. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, do you want to get to the playoffs and lose in the first round despite having A.J. Brown, Derrick Henry, exactly. Harold, Harold Landry on your defense, mm-hmm. and Rashawn Evans, who's now gone, who they didn't pay for some reason? Like, to do all that, I don't know. Like, I don't want that, but I I mean, I kind of do want that because I don't want to be picking second every year, but also I, I do want to get to the pinnacle. I want to yeah. know what it feels like to be in that championship game. And the, he talked about for it, you know what I'm saying? And be relevant. Yeah. And, and to see Stafford leave and go and do what he did, regardless of what was around him, it's like, man, we really dropped the ball there. And now we have an opportunity to kind of pick the ball back up and hopefully reshape it into something good. It's like building a snowman or like a ball of clay, right? looks like a piece of shit laying on the ground, but then if you can put it together and roll it up, you might develop something here, yeah. and you might make a beautiful piece of pottery or fucking a <laughs> snowman. I don't know what the hell you do with clay, but... <laughs> to make a snowman yeah, with fucking well, clay. I'm the snowman, baby. Yeah. <laughs> um, So last year, I was trying to get everyone on the Trey Lance train. I was, I was I a trigger train train. And everyone's like, no, we got Ritter coming next year. We got Rattler coming next year. We got Howell coming Dude, next Spencer year. Dude, Spencer Rattler, that's going to scar me for life. Yeah, it's easy was? Like, everyone thought he was going to be sick? Or like, I what? thought he was going to be top-notch, dude. You and think then, there's still that ability, though? Like, like, no? It's over. He showed, like, terrible, terrible shit on tape or what? I mean, normally when a guy has a really bad year and then goes to another place, he's not going to reignite himself. He's he's got some character issues. It dates back to high school like cocky. Cocky. Yeah. Gets gets mad at receivers for not being open. He's and, ugly too. And he's yeah, he's weird looking. Yeah. <laughs> Man, he does he, not have quarterback face. <laughs> nah, dude. Like that's a guy that you see in the USFL and then later on like working at a Wendy's. Like that's yeah. just what <laughs> You know what I mean? I can't see yeah. him at a Wendy's. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude. Man, imagine pulling up to the window and be like, "Wait." <laughs> That's a rattler? We're just supposed to win a Heisman? <laughs> Dude, you signed my bag? Yeah. Oh, shit. Will you sign this burger? Yeah. I'm a big uh, DJ Long Louis guy, and I like him a lot. I think Such a you fun know, name. He, he had a bad year last year. Obviously, yeah. the team was bad. It was down It was down year for, for Clemson, but yeah. his size, man, he's like 6'4". He's fucking huge. He's got a cannon. Like yeah. I think... It, if we don't go quarterback this year and we have that, you know, seven to eight win season that people are projecting, I think we're going to be five to six. I think we're going to win five games. Yeah. But if we're around there and, you know, we're at 10 to 14 a pick, I would love to see a scoop along the Louis if Bryce Young and Stroud are already gone. Yeah, and, I mean, you do have two first-rounders next year. And I got to stop saying yeah before I answer every fucking question. I hate <laughs> no, when dude, people, you're I, no, I hate when people do that. 
and I'm driving myself. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> but, but no, I mean, like you have two first rounders next year and you might be able to package something up and get one of those guys. But mm -hmm. and, and I guess like, I like those guys a lot, but I, again, I like, I liked Sam Howell a lot this coming into this year. I liked Rattler a lot coming into this That's year right, yeah, and they thing. weren't what we thought they were like, Howell, sure. I give him kind of the benefit of the doubt because he lost once, his whole, offense. he lost his yeah. whole offense. He lost four guys of the 21 draft. So it's like, yeah. It and he, rough, and he though. even admitted, he even admitted like, Hey, I need to get better going through my progressions, but I lost a bunch of talent. Like, it's just not for me. Like I, I'm, I'm, I'm not comfortable with what I'm doing right now, mm -hmm. but I think, you know, the guys that you mentioned, they could very much be in the cards right now. We don't know that next year at this time. So that's why I'm just like, dude, you might want to just take Malik now. And maybe that's the thought process. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah I'm going to take this guy now. Fuck okay, it, yeah. we're here. He's sitting there for us. Scoop yeah, and, him and up, I, you like, know? I'm with you. I'd take that Clemson kid. He's a big-bodied guy, big mm -hmm. arm. But similar to kind of Malik in a way, like, he's got some work to do, too. Yeah, and yeah if, for sure. If I'm going to take a guy that's going to need some work, I should do it year two of my regime, not year three. Yeah. Fair. Well, fuck. I was th I'm sorry. I was thinking about some shit. <laughs> Malik not. scares me, but I also like like him a lot. But at the same time, dude, we have two picks scared. next year, so like we should be fucking like pretty straight. And I'm not a fan of fucking like trading our picks to move up. Like, I hate that idea. I get it like, if there's a guy that you're absolutely in love with, because like, yeah, you're in love with that guy. Yeah. But at the end of the day, he's still like an NFL rookie, and he still could be like a, a tease Tabor or fucking rat. You know what I'm saying? Like, it fools gold, and you're giving up other shots at other guys. Yeah. For it, so it's like when you have a quarterback right there, fucking pull the trigger. Yep. No, 100%. And I, like I always say, if you're going to bet on upside, you don't bet on it with an edge rusher like Trayvon Walker. You bet on the upside of a quarterback. 1,000%. Because you have enough draft capital, five picks in the top 100. Yeah. You have plenty of picks next year. You have the money. You can make it work. And if it doesn't work, you're still, like you mentioned, if they only win five or six games, they're still in a position to, to fix their wrong this year yeah. by taking a leak, just like the Cardinals did. We've seen teams do it before. I mean, they took Rosen, yeah, yeah. and they took Kyler, Kyler Murray yeah. the very next year, and it's like, uh -huh. sure, that sucked for Josh Rosen, and sure, I swung and I missed on Josh Rosen, yeah. but a lot of people did. I mean, mm -hmm. so. And, that, and that's why I think the quarterback comes at, I mean, I, don't get me wrong, like, I wouldn't have zero problem with us taking Lee Wilson too, and I would be extremely excited. But that's the only reason why I think we may see the quarterback at 32 Mm -hmm. is because it's not as much of a fucking, like, this guy needs to get in now. Or, yeah. Like, put him in now. Or, like, and if he misses, you're like, you fucked up that pick. Right. It's not a number two pick. It's fucking 32, you know? Right. Yeah, 100%. And, I, and, I, and I, I hate when people are like, the number two pick has to play right away. Well, it yeah. doesn't, even if it is a quarterback. Like, they don't have to play right away. And some quarterbacks are wired differently. Like, if a guy is not comfortable playing yet, don't play him. Yeah. Because yeah. he has to learn. But there's this thought of, well, if you draft a quarterback, he's got to play because you're wasting years and stupid, time. And stupid, stupid like, mentality. No, you're not. Don't force your hand, you know. Yeah. Not force your hand. And sure, as a, if you have that fifth-year option, are you wasting a year to let him learn? Yeah, but if that ultimately... I'm putting him out there, I'm also wasting a year. That leads to Patrick him. Mahomes or Aaron Rodgers yeah, or if, Steve Young. It's yeah, like and, that. yeah, and if it leads to, to years of success in a Super Bowl or division championships or whatever... You didn't waste that year. Yeah. You exactly. benefited cold heartedly from that year. Mm -hmm. So exactly. I mean, I I'm I'm I don't think they're gonna take a QB at thirty two. I know Peter Schrager says that might happen, but I I don't see it. Yeah. If they don't go QB at two, do you, do you think there's no QB this year then? Unless and again, unless, unless something happens where like a Ritter or something falls, maybe, but I I don't see it happening. I just I I think Matt Carell, Tennessee's a very interesting spot for him. I think the Packers at 28 could be in a very interesting spot to trade out um, if they take that receiver at 22 or if they value a lot of day two receivers. Again, Atlanta. If Atlanta passes on QB at eight, they just met with Matt Carell today. Yeah. So and I don't think that's the first time they met with him from what I've heard. So We haven't met with him at all, have we? I don't believe so. Yeah. And if they if – they, Bring it if, if if Atlanta takes whatever they take at eight, the best player on the board, offense tackle, edge rusher, do they have an intriguing enough offer to a team like Kansas City who picks back to back? Green Bay, who has two picks there. Tennessee, are they an intriguing team? As we mentioned, Ryan Tannehill's not getting the job done. Mm -hmm. Matt Carell, he makes sense there if they need a guy yeah. for a year. 
He's like a younger tenant. Maybe that like. maybe that's what'll make AJ Brown happy enough to stay around. You know? well, Ole Miss, actually, that Ole might Miss, be the goal there too. Ole Miss, yeah. Ole Miss. Yeah. I that's mean, true. I don't yeah. I don't think they necessarily played together, but I'm sure they saw each other. And they other. trade for oh, DK because sure. they got that QB on a rookie deal. Yeah. That would be insanity. That'd be just, fucking nuts. Just actually, running yeah. the Ole Miss all Miss offense. Yeah. With all, kind of all they need now is Lane Kiffin. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck Lane Kiffin. Overrated. But I gotta do the bet show. Scott just called me. I still gotta take a poop. <laughs> Thanks, fellas. Well, yeah, dude. Thanks, yes. for, thanks for being on, man. It's a pleasure. Yeah. It's a pleasure to, you know, get your knowledge, break down that great mind of yours, that beautiful, sexy brain. <laughs> you know, we, we really appreciate you in here dropping knowledge bombs on us and hype for the draft, man. I, me too. Real I'm, hype. I'm for gonna the try draft. not to get too drunk. If not, I may be sleeping downtown or I'm taking an Uber. I I'm getting, I'm getting real fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I already know it. It's a draft, if, man. If, I don't care if we draft. Put your analysis on this one. <laughs> <laughs> if we draft Malik Willis, I'm taking two Irish car bombs. Back to back, Jesus Damn. Christ! Yeah. That's that's, Jesus that's gonna be happen. If we draft fucking Kyle Hamilton, I'm doing a Jen Will, yeah, shot, I, or a I, Will well Jen shot. I can't get too fucked up because I'm supposed to be on around like the tenth, eleventh pick. So yeah. I and like that's an hour, hour and a half in. But also like I have no like every day something's different with a radio producer or somebody calling me. So like for if sure. I gotta step out for a call to get on the horn on something, yeah. I might have to. Yeah. So I want to be somewhat coherent, but also. I love this shit so much. I like to remember shit too. And yes. I, like, yes. I will say this. That's why I'm not, yeah. Eric Ebron, when we took him, I, bla- oh, I blacked yeah. out afterwards. And For I sure. don't remember that draft to save my life. And that bothers me. Yeah. That kid had fucking drops in his highlights. Bad omen, though. I went, I was, we, I had friends over at my house that I currently live in still. I got out of my house. They were, we, we finished like a fifth of Jack, a case of beer, all this stuff before the draft. Oh, yeah. And then the draft <laughs> happened. We took him 10. I grabbed the first bottle I saw, chugged it, went outside. It was probably fireball. I went outside and I punched somebody's car. I was that mad. <laughs> Damn, and dude. I still live in that neighborhood. So guess who's blocking it? It's, it's mine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. Yeah, I did. <laughs> Why the fuck did you do that? Eric <laughs> Ebron did this. He should have got Aaron Donald. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, man. man. I wanted OBJ so bad, man. Uh, OBJ, Aaron Donald. Yeah, and we it. took Eric Ebron. Made zero sense. None. And at that point, too, I did not, like, understand football or watch tape or anything like I do now. And I was even like, what the fuck? Yeah. We picked the tight end who's known for dropping balls. Literally, when they showed his highlights, they were like, him dropping balls and Kuiper or some shit was like, yeah, but look at the route running. Or yeah. like, whoa, whoa, I'm whoa, like, whoa. there's a drop in his fucking highlight. You can talk about a guy, you know, he's got great hands, but not really. He's dropping balls. I mean... <laughs> Fucking oh, wild, man. man. For us, Fuck. I'm glad we fucking did this, man. Oh, glad yeah. we got you in. That was awesome. Happy to be part of the team, man. Oh, for sure. Oh, for sure. I definitely, like, anytime you got time and you want to crank some content out, let me know. And hit the like button. I'm going to take like shit. Button. Shout out Better Rate Morgan one Scott, more time. I apologize. Shout him out. Bets. Yeah, Shout we'll out. be we'll be back. Yeah, I'm pooping. Get ready for this. Get ready for this draft, baby. Draft Let's party. Go. Brass rail. Be there.